Stanislaw here with Motion VFX, and in this lesson, we'll be taking a look at the M Tracker 3D plugin. I've imported some footage into Apple Motion. It's a 4K clip running at 24 frames per second. To track this footage, we can either come up to our Filters tab or into our Libraries, navigate to Filters, Motion VFX, M Tracker 3D. Next, let's drag and drop M Tracker 3D onto our footage. The next step is track the footage. Let's go ahead and click track to start tracking. Once tracking is complete, let's click this icon. Notice that I can scroll over my scene and set my point pretty much anywhere. I think I'll set it right about here. If I want to set more than one point, all I need to do is hold on to the command key. To remove all the other points, I'll just click once more without holding on the command key. Let's review that. Once I'm done, I'll click the icon again. Next, what we want to do is drag the animated camera from our library and favorites folder, mTracker 3D. Here's what that means. We'll go into our library tab, and in here we have a favorites folder. In that favorites folder, we'll have a new folder for mTracker 3D, along with two items, a 3D group and camera. Let's click and drag those into our project. Cameras only work with 3D group. So this dialog is asking if we'd like to switch our 2D to 3D groups. I do, so I'll go ahead and switch. But I'm presented with a problem. My footage went completely black. Well, that's just because it turned into a 3D layer. Let's click this icon to turn it back into a 2D layer and keep our 3D group and our camera in that 3D layer. With just the 3D group selected, I can review and check my track. Let's go ahead and make some text. I'll click my text icon and let's place it roughly where our text is going to be. Next, I'll customize it using the formatting options. Next, let's make sure we reset our transformations. When we reset our transformation, now our street layer is going to use the same coordinates as our 3D group. Let's take a look at that. Okay, that's locked on, but it's not working exactly the way I'd like. I'll set the anchor point to the bottom of this text layer. That way it'll match up at the bottom of our 3D group. When you're changing your anchor point, your position will probably change. So make sure you reset that transformation so the position is zeroed out to follow the 3D point. Let's make this a little bit more interesting and make this a 3D text layer. To do so, I'll click my street and in my text appearance tab, I'll change this to 3D. Let's make some changes here to make this a little bit more stylish. I'll change this to a diagonal right, and you can see what's happening with our text already. Next, I'll change this intensity down to 17%. I'll turn on self shadows and continue working with my text layers using the environment and even the material down below. Let's duplicate this and add a second layer. I'll right click and choose duplicate or use keyboard shortcut command D. I think I'll place this one right on top. And let's rename this layer. Let's continue to make changes to the second text layer.
Let's go ahead and rename these layers. And to keep things tidy, I think I'll put them in their own group. Now that we've got that in our scene, let's make this a little bit more interesting with some lighting. I'll go to Add Object and click Lights. This will put a new point light in my scene. Just like before, to get things into position, I'm going to reset this parameter and put this in my 3D group. Now I can see how this is interacting in my scene. Using the controls on screen and inside the inspector, I'm going to make some changes to my light, but I'll probably still end up tweaking these just a bit later. Next, I'll make sure I turn on my shadows and we'll add some changes to this too. So let's duplicate this light. Because it's a duplicate, it's going to be in the same exact position and have the same exact parameters. This is great when you want to start with a base and just make some adjustments to them. I'll make one more duplicate to complete the lighting for the scene. I'll be coming back and making changes to these lights, but for right now, I'll go ahead and rename these and put them in their own group with our text layers. Even though we have lights and shadows in our scene, you'll notice we don't have any down here. We'll have to create one from scratch. In the meantime, let's go ahead and finalize the design of how this text is laid out on our screen. Next, let's place a color solid to act as a shadow catcher for this text. So at the beginning of my timeline, we can go to Add Object, Generators, and we'll choose Color Solid. We want to make sure that that is inside our 3D group, so that way it holds on to that same 3D point. I'll collapse these for right now. Let's change this to a color white. In its properties, I'll change this to negative 90 degrees. Now that's right, but you'll notice that we can't see our text. What we need to do is make sure that our color solid is beneath our content. The easiest way to do that is to click it and hold on to command and press the left bracket. That's looking a little bit better. In the inspector, I'll change the blend mode to multiply and in lighting, we'll change it from inherited to off. That's really important. That way our layer won't have any of the white in there. It'll just act as a shadow catcher. And right now our layer is extending pretty far out. So using the controls, I'm just going to pull it back so it's a little bit more in line with our horizon of our alley. Now in this point, I'm gonna open up my different light layers and start working with these shadows a little bit. I'll turn them on and off to see exactly how the shadows are lighting things. This light one is our big shadow, so I'm going to click this. I think I'll reset the transformation here and start resetting this up a little bit better. From here, I'm going to go ahead and continue working with these light layers, and inside the light panel, I'll continue to soften my shadows using the shadow controls.
Because I was moving my anchor point, it looks like my group is off just a slight bit. I'll rearrange that, and then next, I'll go ahead and add a Gaussian blur filter to this color solid group. And the reason for that is because that'll help soften out some of these shadows. If I raise this up to about 64, it doesn't do too much. But if I go up quite a bit, you can see how it starts softening up those shadows. As one last touch to help the scene better match, I'm gonna add a contrast filter that's in our color tab to our footage layer. So clicking and dragging this onto that footage layer, I'll drop it to about 0.8, and that'll help desaturate some of that contrast and make it look a little bit more in line with our text layer. And here is our final example. Again, my name is Stanislaw Robert Liberto with Motion VFX. This has been the M Tracker 3D in Apple Motion. If you like this tutorial and you want to see more of these, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.